actual aim of this lecture series is going to be that you understand these two conditions trigeminal neuralgia and facial nerve palsy but before that you need to understand what nerve injury is okay and to understand what nerve injury is you need to understand nerve anatomy okay so we'll start with the nerve anatomy part so <coughs> one second uh point so dikh raha hai na so i hope you guys remember your first year anatomy and this is the neuron okay this is the neuron cell body and we have these dendrites dendrons right so they take in the impulse and this portion is called as axon hillock okay all the impulse uh, that comes in from the dendrites it is collected at this area once it reaches a sufficient strength then it is passed on to the axon okay uh, <coughs> and this is something that you read in local anesthesia first chapter ha huh? impulse pro generation and propagation right okay understood this part now if you remember <coughs> uh, in your books uh, you read the nerve fiber axon is surrounded by myelin sheet a myelin sheet is nothing but uh, a schwann cell that has deposited a sheet around a uh, axon okay in a spiral fashion so you can see the nucleus of the schwann cell and it has deposited a spiral fashion myelin sheet around the uh, <coughs> axon okay so the um, sensory nerves what they do is they take the impulse uh, that they, uh, they take the impulse from the periphery to the brain right so this is a very simple diagram okay showing a multipolar <coughs> <coughs> this is a simple diagram that shows a multipolar uh, uh, not no, multipolar neuron that is taking the impulse from the periphery touch or pain whatever it is and it takes uh, uh, the, the impulse to the brain okay where the impulse is analyzed and the required action is taken okay so we have different types of neurons if you remember multipolar mono or unipolar bipolar okay so in this case uh, we have central process that uh, that you can call as uh, central process that is towards the brain that is called as dendron okay the one that goes to the periphery that is axon okay and uh, <coughs> this is a very simple diagram as i told you we also have in sensory cases uh, sensory nerves we have ganglions also in the center so yahan pe ganglion rahega suppose so we'll have pre ganglionic fibers and post ganglionic fibers okay wahan pe in the ganglion we have the synapse between the two nerves no, no, two neurons okay dendrons and axons okay that is what we call pre ganglionic fibers that are before the ganglion and post ganglionic fibers jo textbook mein padha hoga shayad samajh bhi nahi aaya hoga but this is what it is then we have the motor neurons <coughs> they take the impulse uh, the command from the brain to the periphery to the muscle to perform some action right itna samajh aaya okay so now neurons uh, again i come back to the myelin sheet it looks like this but when we cut oh ye kahan ha so when we take a cross section it looks like a spiral sheet okay now <coughs> we are going to talk about the nerve anatomy starting from the smallest unit and going on to the uh, the whole structure that is called as uh, nerve okay so again this yellow part is axon surrounded by this what is this purple myelin sheet okay myelin sheet now this unit myelin sheet plus axon <coughs> this is no fiber and it is surrounded by a uh, thin sheet called as endoneurium okay endoneurium <coughs> now if we bunch up this unit axon myelin sheet and the endoneurium this bundle is called as fascicle okay now this fascicle is surrounded by perineurium okay now we are going to zoom out a little bit now this whole unit if we bunch up this unit and this is surrounded by epineurium okay samajh aaya we have three things one is endoneurium that surrounds the nerve fiber then we have the bundles and that is called as fascicle and the fascicle is surrounded by perineurium right <coughs> and if we bunch up all these perineurium structures 
we have the epineurium that uh, surrounds all of these structures now between these uh, <coughs> fascicles we have blood vessels and we have the connective tissue and adipose tissue i'll show you the diagrams so basically this was it now this is the diagram that you're going to see in your textbooks okay so i hope ab aapko samajh aaya hoga we have the exon that is surrounded by the myelin sheet then this structure is surrounded by the endoneurium and uh, this endoneurium they bunch up uh, endoneurium structure uh, that contains the schwann uh, myelin sheet exon and endoneurium this bunch up and we call it as fascicles fascicle is surrounded by perineurium perineurium and these all structures are surrounded by the whole nerve is surrounded by epineurium okay samajh gaya simple okay so you can compare these two things okay so we are done with the nerve anatomy part क्लियर अभी तक आई होप क्लियर है ठीक है तो नाउ वी कम टू द नर्व इंजरी पार्ट बिफोर दैट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज इंजरी इंजरी क्या है इट इज डैमेज टू द बॉडी कॉज बाय एन एक्सटर्नल फोर्स राइट इट कैन बी फिजिकल थर्मल और केमिकल द एक्सटर्नल फोर्स ओके सिमिलरली नर्व इंजरी इज डैमेज टू द नर्व कॉज बाय एन एक्सटर्नल फोर्स ओके इट कैन द फोर्स कैन बी ब्लंट ट्रॉमा stretching transaction now blunt trauma i'll give you an example uh, you've seen iops in which we see inferior alveolar nerve it is pretty close to the third molar suppose the roots of the third molar mandibular third molar are in close contact with the nerve now when we elevate the third molar it is going to apply pressure on the nerve and then come out right so that is blunt trauma usme bas pressure pada and then it comes out okay so this is not going to cause total discontinuity total cutting of the nerve okay but it will apply some pressure that will lead to inflammation and that will lead to demyelination we'll talk about all that uh, later on then we have stretching stretching mein kaise i'll give you an example body fracture ho gaya sir ne jo padha hai okay we have a body fracture and there is mobility of the fracture segment the nerve is not that stretchable so when there is movement of the fracture segment there will be stretching of the nerve stretching hoga it is a stretching of the nerve to inflammation and it will excess stretching it might lead to breaking of the nerve the whole structure is cut okay then we have transaction for example uh, impaction ka lecture ho gaya so we, we uh, when we remove the third molar we have to gutter the bone surrounding the tooth and we might have to section the tooth okay now as i gave you an example <coughs> the tooth is close to the nerve right so while sectioning the tooth we didn't realize that we have already sectioned the tooth now we are inside the bone now tooth ke just niche just below the tooth we have the nerve and accidentally we cut the nerve using your bur okay that is complete transaction okay this is the example of inferior alveolar nerve in case of facial nerve uh, while performing any extra oral approach in the mandibular angle region or condyle region or parotid surgery we might uh, just cut it accidentally the facial nerve that will lead to facial nerve paralysis again we are going to talk about that afterwards in the next lecture or uske baad shayad so now we come to the next part we need to talk about the classification of nerve injuries so do you have any idea why we need classifications what is the function of a classification <coughs> ha huh? treatment planning okay one and communication yes So suppose you're talking to your colleagues. You're not going to say, "Yeah, patient." Ke, if, if we talk about nerve injury, we're not going to say, "Oh, there's endoneurium damage. Who are perineurium damage? Who are epineurium damage? Who are there's loss of myelin sheet?" Okay, <coughs> we're just going to tell them that this is this type, uh, this class of injury. We'll talk about all the classification. So the person who's listening, if he knows the classification, आपने बस एक word बोला, he'll understand what all structures have been damaged, right? Okay, so <coughs> better treatment planning and for communication okay that is the purpose of classifications now before we talk about the different classifications of nerve injuries we need to talk about something called as valerian degeneration okay <coughs> so again thoda sa recap karenge i'll hammer this uh, anatomy part into your head wo yaad hona chahiye tum logo ko okay so again we'll talk about this uh, we have this neuron we have the myelin sheet that is covered by endoneurium okay so let's zoom out so again we see this endoneurium uh, we see the neuron so let's talk about the injury part now now we all know that this 
uh, exon it gets the nutrition from the cell body okay so if the <coughs> sorry <coughs> cell body say uh, it receives the nutrition from the cell body okay to perform the various actions okay for some reason there is total discontinuity of uh, at this region there is an injury and we have the discontinuity okay in this exon region now the nutrition from the nerve cell body a neuron cell body it is not able to reach this distal portion okay if you remember distal and proximal segments the one that is away that is distal the one that is closer that is proximal so this is the distal segment now the nutrition is, uh, the distal segment is not able to receive its nutrition so what will happen is it will undergo degeneration okay because of the lack of nutrition of course isme ye bhi hota hai ki once uh, it has degenerated there is another cell growth uh, uh, there is a proliferation of the exonal end and the uh, exon is regenerated that is a different thing currently we are talking about wallerian degeneration so because of the lack of nutrition it undergoes degeneration okay <coughs> now again uh, we'll reduce the opacity of this structure so we can see what's going on uh, as mentioned if there is injury at this segment so there will be wallerian degeneration at the distal segment right now it uh, there will be some residue after the degeneration now that residue is being eaten up by the macrophages okay now after that what happens is there will be proliferation uh, is my diagram let me show you ha ah, yeah so <clears throat> again this is the diagram somewhat similar to this you are going to see into your textbooks okay so there is total discontinuity suppose in this example blade se cut kiya hai okay so there is uh, dis uh, discontinuity of the uh, exon and then we have the wallerian degeneration of the distal segment and then there is proliferation of the uh, exonal ending from the uh, proximal segment and the exon is regenerated now <coughs> there is a catch to that that the endoneurium should be intact okay otherwise these will flare up bahar nikal jayenge if there is endoneurium the endoneurium is going to act as a guide ki isi direction mein aapko grow hona hai okay whereas if there is no endoneurium it is cut totally these uh, proliferation they'll, they'll spread out okay and uh, we'll talk about all this uh, in the uh, later lectures so this is the <coughs> <coughs> diagram that you'll see after uh, uh, if there is only blunt trauma mostly there will be uh, demyelination if there is a, a excessive pressure is there even in blunt trauma then we might see that there is a wallerian degeneration and uh, so on we'll talk about this after all so now that you understand what wallerian degeneration is Uh, we'll talk about different classifications okay now we have two types of classification one is sedens classification given by sir herbert seden then we have sunderland's classification given by not this sundar we have sir sidney sunderland okay theek hai hmm. so in every lecture and textbooks first we talk about sedan and then sunderland but i am going to do reverse we are going to talk about first sunderland classification and then we'll talk about sedan's classification <coughs> now in sunderland's uh, sunderland's classification we have first degree second degree to up to the fifth degree of injuries okay now we'll talk about the first degree we have demyelination as i mentioned what happens because of blunt uh, trauma and uh, uh, inflammation there is demyelination the myelin sheet is damaged so that can regrow over a period of time okay there is no loss of continuity of this endoneurium and the nerve okay we just have the myelin sheet that is discontinued okay so as i mentioned uh, for the nerve growth uh, uh, regeneration of the nerve okay <coughs> we need an intact endoneurium isme to we have intact endoneurium also we have intact exon also okay so the recovery will be excellent okay uh, maximum within 1 to 3 months uh, the uh, recovery is complete okay then we come to the second degree uh, uh, injury nerve injury in that we see uh, demyelination along with wallerian degeneration okay ab tak i hope wallerian degeneration you understand okay so we have two things demyelination wallerian degeneration in second degree okay now again <coughs> we have the intact endoneurium here okay exon is damaged myelin sheath is damaged but we have the intact uh, endoneurium okay so we are going to have a very good prognosis uh, full recovery <coughs> sorry full recovery is expected within 3 to 6 months okay 
या आई फॉर्गॉट टू टेल यू वन थिंग जब मैंने बताया था दैट आफ्टर दिस वॉलर इन डी जनरेशन द रेसिड्यू इज रिमूव एंड वी हैव द प्रोलिफरेशन ऑफ द नर्व राइट रीजेनरेशन द रीजेनरेशन इज एट अ मैक्सिम वन एम एम पर डे इतना स्लो होता है ओके Uh, I forgot to mention that point. That's why I'll be at karo. Okay. So again, I'll I'll go back and uh, recap. First degree uh, nerve injury, we have demyelination. Second degree, me we have demyelination plus Wallerian degeneration. Ah, uh, in both the cases, we have intact endoneurium. So full pro, full recovery is expected. पहले में one to three months, इसमें three to six months. Okay? क्योंकि इसमें पूरा regenerate करना पड़ेगा. Whereas in that case, first degree, we have the myelin sheet that has to be regenerated. That's it. Okay? Then we come to the third uh, degree. We have again. demyelination wallerian degeneration and we have loss of continuity of the endoneurium okay now remember this we have the intact epineurium we have the intact perineurium but we have totally discontinuation of uh, endoneurium and the uh, nerve <coughs> exon okay totally cut ho gaya wo part okay it can be because of stretching or because of uh, blunt trauma okay so only endoneurium is damaged now we come to the fourth uh, degree ओके okay? uh, आपको समझ तो आ ही रहा होगा गोइंग वन लेवल अप ओके सो इन द फोर्थ ओ आई फॉर्गॉट टू टॉक टॉक अबाउट प्रोग्नोसिस सो इन दिस वी डोंट हैव द एंडोन्यूरियम इंटैक्ट सो क्या होगा पुअर प्रोग्नोसिस रहेगा बिकॉज द रीजेनरेशन डजेंट हैव अ गाइड टू टू नो वे इट वे इट हैज टू गो फॉरवर्ड वे टू इट हैज टू रीजेनरेट ओके नाउ वी हैव द इसमें रिकवरी इज पुअर इट माइट लाइक एबनॉर्मल फंक्शन भी हो सकता है विल टॉक अबाउट दिस हाउ एबनॉर्मल फंक्शन इज देर इन केस ऑफ थर्ड डिग्री आफ्टर वर्ड्स ओके नाउ वी कम टू द फोर्थ डिग्री इसमें अगेन वी गो वन लेवल अप वॉलेरियन डी जनरेशन इज देर डीमाइलिनेशन इज देर वी हैव लॉस ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द एंडोन्यूरियम एंड वी हैव लॉस ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द पेरीन्यूरियम ओके अफकोर्स इसमें द प्रोग्नोस इज वेरी पुअर एंड वील नीड सर्जरी okay if the uh, <coughs> perineurium is cut we'll have to re-suture it back to get an acceptably good recovery okay then we have the fifth degree uh, common sense jo last structure bacha hai usko bhi cut kar denge that is uh, epineurium okay so in fifth degree we have demyelination wallerian degeneration loss of continuity of endoneurium perineurium and epineurium okay samajh aaya simple so far so of course in this case what do you think the prognosis is kaise recovery hogi zero chance of recovery until you perform some micro surgery on this okay and even after the micro surgery <coughs> even after suturing the recovery is full recovery is not expected okay and if we leave this cut uh, transected uh, nerve fiber bundle separated suture nahi kiya kuch nahi kiya so what happens i told you there is regeneration that might lead to it doesn't have any guide so that might lead to neuroma formation okay so we have risk of neuroma formation also so now we're going to look at it in the format of what you find in your textbooks table format okay <coughs> first degree demyelination prognosis is excellent second degree demyelination wallerian degeneration prognosis is good okay in first degree we get a <coughs> Full recovery uh, within one to three months, whereas in second degree three to six months. Third degree Wallerian degeneration, demyelination, and loss of continuity of endoneurium. Okay, prognosis is poor. It may require. It may require. Not always. It may require surgery. Then in fourth degree we go one level up. So demyelination, Wallerian, and loss of continuity of endoneurium and perineurium. Okay, in this poor. <coughs> <coughs> sorry in this the prognosis is poor and surgery is surely required okay in case of third it may be required whereas in case of fourth it is surely required now in case of fifth we have everything sub cut ho gaya hai so demyelination wallerian degeneration endoneurium perineurium epineurium all these are cut okay so poor prognosis surely required surgery and risk of neuroma formation is there okay now once you understand central as classification na it becomes easy for you to understand the sedens classification hmm? so we come to sedens classification uh, okay this is not sedens uh, classification this is a central lens classification okay so the first uh, degree of central lens that is demyelination with a very good prognosis that is called as neuropaxia under sedens classification okay 
then we have <laughs> second third fourth degrees okay even if it is <coughs> sorry even if it is only demyelination or valerian degeneration we'll call it exono exonotomesis tomesis is called as uh, cutting of a uh, organ okay now if it is third uh, degree of sunderland's that is loss of continuity of endoneurium still it is called as exonotomesis if it is fourth degree of sunderland's that is loss of continuity of endoneurium and peroneurium still it is called as nambolo exonotomesis okay then we have the fifth degree of sunderland's that is loss of continuity of endoneurium peroneurium demyelination valerian degeneration that is called as a puri cut ho gayi hai it is neurotomesis cutting of a part that is in this case the whole nerve is cut now uh, i forgot to tell you this praxia is loss of function so in this case there is a temporary loss of function loss of conduction is there so <laughs> that is why it is called as neuropraxia and tomesis is separation of parts okay samajh aaya 